Yo, I'm Matthew Kingpin. In war, a full frontal assault isn't always the most effective way to take down an enemy team. Sometimes a little sabotage goes a long way. And that's the point of the lurker. Today, I'm going to be providing a guide to being the absolute rattiest rat who ever ratted, and show you all just how to be public enemy number one for the enemy team. So get ready, because we're going in sneaky beaky like. So what is the overall goal of the Lurker? The overall goal of the Lurker is to deceive the enemy team and make them as uncomfortable as possible to ease the pressure off of your teammates. How the Lurker accomplishes this goal is through stealth, misdirection, and a whole lot of patience. Patience is a virtue, misdirection is an art, but stealth? I'm a snake, babe. I know a thing or two about being sneaky. Let's get into it. It's the quiet before the storm. The uneasy silence before an attack, Stealth is a crucial aspect of any good lurk. Sun Tzu once said to appear weak when you are strong, and there's nothing that makes an enemy let their guard down more than to convince them that an area is clear and that they are safe. Stealth is about waiting for the perfect moment to announce your presence, and also about ensuring that you aren't discovered and hard countered too quickly, and or without gaining a lot in exchange for your team's success. The basics of employing stealthiness into your toolkit are relatively obvious from a logical standpoint. Walk everywhere, refrain from throwing nades or dropping weapons with a bomb on the ground, don't always take the first opportunity to shoot, but there will eventually come a time where your contribution to the round is going to require you to make some noise and commit to a play. And that play oftentimes comes in the form of misdirection, capitalizing on that phenomenally false sense of security that the enemy team might have offered up to you. All warfare is based on deception, to once again quote Sun Tzu. Sometimes a round is able to be won not through the firing of bullets, but through the precise manipulation of information. And in CS, fallacious information is oftentimes deadlier than the weapons themselves. Misdirection in CS can take on both a form of subtle trickery or deliberately loud diversion. And I'll explain what I mean by both. Subtle trickery entails small but noticeably impactful actions to throw off the enemy team's timings, aim, crosshair placement, or positioning to give an advantage to you or your teammates. These can be things like waiting an extra second to trade off of a teammate's death to catch a CT repositioning or looking away, or catching a timing on a CT rotating out because you threw a piece of utility that lands in a different part of the map. Lurking isn't always about being the hero of the round and winning the whole thing yourself, however. Oftentimes, it is the exact opposite, offering yourself up as a sacrifice to draw the enemy team away and allow your other teammates an easier time somewhere else. That's where the deliberate diversions come into play. These are things like throwing a fake execute on a bomb site, or giving a fake sound cue of a jump down or a footstep to draw just the smallest bit of focus away from an enemy holding an angle on a teammate, or just jiggle peeking an angle with a hostile in it over and over to force attention on you while another teammate goes in for the kill. Misdirection, when applied correctly, will make the enemy team always wary of every bit of information they are given, hesitant to rotate even when it is desperately needed, and will force the enemy team to devote more of their limited mental acuity to attempting to discern the true threats from your maliciously mischievous misdirection. And now, since you've all waited so patiently for this last section, I suppose it is time to go into the final deadly tool in a lurker's arsenal, the simple act of patience. If any of you are familiar with Avatar The Last Airbender, you'll know that sometimes it is better to wait for the most optimal moment to strike over taking an earlier opportunity, as quoted by a 100 plus year old bodybuilder slash insane man. In CS2, rounds are only two minutes in length, plus bomb timer, so patience is something that is vitally important to understanding fully as to not overdo it and turn patience into throwing. So what is that optimal sweet spot between making too early of a play and not being able to make a play at all? That, unfortunately, is something that only comes with developing your game sense and raw experience with how the game functions. It's not really something I can communicate with just words. I can say a few pointers to help out with your ability to take more optimal plays, however, though. Firstly, sometimes it is better to let a teammate die uncontested if it means that you'll be able to get an extremely impactful kill or kills off of your friend's demise. If your teammate dies triple box on Mirage, for example, and you're sitting uncleared in firebox just biding your time to strike, it's oftentimes much better to just let the enemy team set themselves up inside of a site, fully unaware of you being there, ignorantly delivering themselves and the bomb into your clutches for an easy set of kills or a bomb denial. Your teammate might be screaming at you, calling you a trash bag, or any other number of horrible things because you're not helping. But if you're given an opportunity to get an easy multifrag or seriously disrupt the enemy team's plans, winning the round is all that matters. Don't bait without purpose, but also don't throw your life away just to appease other players. 
Secondly, understand that information is power in Counter-Strike, and sometimes killing a player gives an enemy team more power than that player's life ever could. Trigger discipline is a more general term for this concept, and it's important to understand where and when to employ it to make your life easier and the enemy's life much harder. Thirdly, something about patience that is crucial to understanding is that it won't always work out for you. Ironically and fittingly, learning to be patient requires patience. Sometimes an enemy team might just be up to your tricks, and you'll be hard countered and get nothing out of your lurk, and that is okay. Lurk plays that are unsuccessful can oftentimes feel much worse than any other type of failure because they are built upon the backs of your teammates by design. So remember that just because a play doesn't work out does not mean that the play was bad. Sometimes the enemy team just gets lucky and happens to check you, or has an intuitive feeling that something isn't quite right, and comes to find out that you were the something not quite right. Be mindful of your own plays, and always consider after the fact if your lurking was just mindless baiting or calculated chicanery. Demo reviewing for lurk players is paramount to see if you were outsmarting or being outsmarted. That's about everything I have to discuss for this video. Effective lurking is nothing short of an art form, oftentimes misunderstood by the wider CS community. It's not always necessary, but when there's an opportunity for lurk players to be impactful, it can oftentimes be a prolific amount of impact. I must confess, I love to lurk. It's one of my favorite roles to have in CS, so I was super stoked to make this guide in particular. I hope what I have said has helped you gain new perspective on this challenging but fulfilling role. As always, please give me any and all feedback you have on this video and any others I have made. It is all read and appreciated deeply. Burn your dread, go into the future, and I'll meet you there. He was watching references here. But he was really there. Patience of the insane, Jesus Christ. <laughs> well done. Yeah, that was triggered discipline incarnate. Holy moly.